Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. This morning I'll be reading from the Gospel of John chapter 17 and I'll be reading verses 1 through 20. Sometimes this is called the high priestly prayer. It's a prayer of Jesus on the last night of his, his life. It's the longest prayer that we have of Jesus. And this is what it says, John chapter 17 verse 1. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the one true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the word, words that you gave me, I have given to them and they have received them and know the truth that I came from you and they have believed that you sent me. I'm asking on their behalf. I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I've been glorified in them, and now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world. And I am coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I'm coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I've given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you, to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in truth. Your word is truth, as you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. I ask not only on behalf of these, but on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word that they may all be one, as you, Father, are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. Let us pray. Jesus, this day, breathe the power of your Spirit on us gathered here, that we may have eyes that see and ears that hear. Not just stuff going on, but you, but you, Lord. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Several years back, a couple came to my church where I was pastor. He had retired as being a pastor in Alabama. The couple had 
had served churches for over 50 years. He was in poor health and had moved to be close to his children and grandchildren. Well, it wasn't long after they attended the church the first time that he passed away. And when I met with his widow about the service, she began to talk about all the places that they had served in Alabama. And she began to tell me all all about the wonderful, generous, gracious people in each of the churches where they had served. And she said, oh, God showed me more beautiful, wonderful, gracious people than I ever thought I would meet. And then she leaned over the table at me. She said, but there were one or two booger bears. <laughs> well, I had to laugh. I haven't heard that expression, a booger bear, since I was a child. As a child, we used to, to play a game. There ain't no booger bears out tonight. And a booger bear was the same thing as a, the boogeyman or a hobgoblin. But every once in a while, a long time ago, you used to hear people say things like, ooh, that job was a booger bear. Or, Oh, that accident was some kind of booger bear. <laughs> Sometimes they were imagined, the booger bears. A hard time, a hard problem, something difficult, monsters out there. Sometimes they were real. Well, we've all run across booger bears in life. Some of them are imagined, some of them are real. Would it help? you to know if someone were praying for you when you come across the booger bears helped me it's helped me for a long time when I was five years old my volunteer choir teacher choir director was um, a woman named Miss Tumlin and I was in her cherub choir as a five-year-old and all through church growing up Every time she saw me, she would say, hey there, Tom, you're one of my cherubs. I pray for you. And even when I got to that place in life where I was pretty sure I wasn't acting like a cherub, she still called me her cherub. (laughs) And she would say, I pray for you. My mother prayed for me. I know she prayed for me. Because she had a time and a place every morning that she prayed. And she had a a list of folks that she prayed for. She prayed every night. My mother prayed for me. And it helped me to know that my mother was praying for me. There are folks here in this church today. I know they pray for me. They don't need to tell me. Sometimes they do. And I'm always blessed by it. I know. People are praying, praying for one another. It gives strength, strength we don't know. Would it help you to know that somebody's praying for you? What if that person were in the room next to you? Or what if that person was Jesus and as close as your very own breath? Jesus. Jesus praying for for you and for me. Sometimes we tend to read the Bible like, well, you know, it's, it's old words, so sacred that we, we hardly can get into them. And You know, right here in verse 20, Jesus is, is he's, it's the last night of his earthly life. He's praying that he'll glorify the Father, and then he's praying for the, the disciples. He says, I ask not only behalf of these These are his disciples, and he's been praying for his disciples because he knows that the the time in front of them, well, it's going to be a booger bear. It's going to be a tough one. It's going to be a difficult time. He's already told them that he's going to be crucified. He's told them that he will send them the Holy Spirit, a helper. But that's not all. He says, I ask not only behalf of these, but I ask on behalf of those those who will believe in me through their word. Right here, John chapter 17, verse 20, Jesus says he's praying for for you and me. Not just in, in the room next door, but as close as our very own breath. He's not only praying for these but he's praying for those and those he's praying for well that's you and me those who will believe those 
who weren't even born before the Book of Bears came. Those who never, who haven't claimed to believe yet. He prayed for, for you and for me. Well, let's look and see what he, he prayed. He prayed for your protection in mine. This is what verse 11 says. It says, And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them in the name that you gave me. Protect them. He prays for your protection and mine. Paul Harvey, in his book, For What It's Worth, tells a story about a a passenger jet that was lined up at the terminal ready for takeoff when the pilot came on the intercom said, may I have your attention, please? Said, the warning light for, for the thermal expander on jet engine number two has come on, and I won't fly the plane until it's replaced. You'll need to go back into the terminal. Well, the lights came on, the flight attendant, flight attendants helped the, the people exit back out into the terminal. They were there for about 10 minutes. And uh, then the all clear came and, and they loaded back onto the jet. And there was a, a passenger from Harlan, Minnesota, turned to the flight attendant and said, wow, that's incredible. They replaced that thermal, <laughs> they placed that thermal expander valve and, and in just 10 minutes, the flight attendant laughed and said, no, there's not one of those things within a thousand miles. What they did is they replaced the pilot. Well, in your life and mine, the warning light comes on. That's the spirit of Jesus inside you and me. It's a warning light that comes on, speaks to us daily. For those who have ears to hear and, and those who have eyes to see, may we never Ignore the voice of Jesus, that, that you're not alone. Paul talks about this in Philippians 4, 6, and 7. He says, be anxious for nothing but in everything with prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. It's Jesus who's, who's the sentinel in our hearts. It's Jesus who guards our minds. It's Jesus who gives that, that warning light, that still, small voice. And God speaks to those who take time to listen for your protection and mine. Jesus prayed for you before the Book of Bears. Jesus prays for you while the hard times in the Book of Bears are here. And he prays for you long after they're gone. Hebrews chapter 4 talks about the, Jesus as the high priest in heaven who intercedes for us, who prays for us. That he's as close as our very own breath and he's in heaven as well. And his voice can be heard between here and there for those who have, well, ears to hear and eyes to see. You're not alone. You're not alone. Jesus prays for your protection. And not only that, Jesus prays for your joy. Verse 13, Jesus says, But now I'm coming to you, and I, I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. Jesus, joy made complete. Now, let's don't get confused here. Joy is not the same thing as, as it's all the circumstances going our way. It's not the same thing as happiness and giggling. He's just told his disciples that he's going to be crucified. They know what crucifixion is all about. They've seen it before. The reason they've seen it before is that the Roman government wanted to make sure they terrorized folks with the crucifixion. They left people hanging on the cross so people would see what happens when you cross the Roman government. 
so people would see what power looks like, power of life and death. Jesus rose from the grave to give us a life in the here and now that goes on to eternity. It's a life that's a relationship with, well, it tells us right here in verse 3, eternal life that you may know the one true God in Jesus Christ whom he has sent. Eternal life is, is knowing God and Jesus Christ in the here and now. And it's that life, it's that life that gives us joy. A joy that's complete, not according to the circumstances, but a joy that's a complete joy, an eternal joy. Joni Erickson Tata tells a story, a story about what happened to her one day. And if you've read any of her books of, or if you've heard her speak, you know that she was paralyzed, paralyzed in a diving accident. And she talks about her her journey, her journey with Jesus Christ through the days and, and through the years. This particular story, she talks about how time she was at a Christian women's conference. She was in the restroom and a, a woman stopped her, said, you have such joy on your face. How do you do it? Well, she knew that they were taking a break at the women's conference and she was wondering how in the world in 60 seconds she was going to tell this woman what it took her 30 years to learn. And she looked at these well-dressed women around her and she said, I don't do it. Well, then others began to listen. She said, what do you mean you don't do it? She said, I'll give you an example Today was an average day. Said my husband Ken left for work at, at six o'clock this morning. I'm alone until I hear the front door open at 7 a.m. That's when a friend of mine arrives to get me up. While I listen to her make coffee, Joni says, I pray. Lord, my friend will soon give me a bath, get me dressed, sit me up in my chair, brush my hair and teeth, and send me out the door. I don't have the strength to face this routine one more time. I have no resources. I don't have a smile to take into the day, but you do. May I have yours? God, I need you desperately. You could have heard a pin drop. So a woman, one of the women said, so what do you do? Joni said, when she enters the room, I turn my head toward her and I give her a smile sent straight from heaven. It's not mine. It's God's. And gesturing at her legs, Joni said, whatever joy you see today was hard won this morning. It's the only way to live. It's the Christian way to live. This morning it may be. There's, there's some folks, some folks within the sound of my voice that are having a hard time of it. No, you're not alone. Jesus, Jesus prayed for you long before the hard time, long before the book of bear, long before you were even born. And Jesus prays for you today in the middle of the hard time. Maybe when the book of bear is most fierce and long after his joy is made complete in you. It's the power of his Holy Spirit alive in, in you and me. It's the resurrected Christ. It's the only way for Christians to live. You're not alone. Jesus prayed for your protection and he prayed for your joy. Joy available to you today. But he didn't stop his prayer right there. Verse 21, it says, Jesus is praying and he says that 
they may all be one as you, Father, are in me and I am in you, that they also may be in us. Well, that's not the only place that Jesus prays for unity. Verse 11, he says, you have given me your name so that they may be one. Verse 20, 21, what we just read, that, that they may all be one. Verse 22, glory that you have given me that I may give them so they may be one. Verse 23, I in them and you in me that they may become completely one. You get the idea that Jesus wants us to be one, one with him and one with one another. If ever there were a book of bear in our culture, it's the book of bear that says, you're okay alone. Or the book of bear that says, yeah, you and Jesus, it's, it's, it's all that's needed. We were made for one another. We were made for God. That in the original creation, God breathed into Adam the breath of life that that's when Adam became a living being, that it was God, a part of Adam and Eve, and, and a part of one another. That Eve was formed from the rib of Adam, that they might be a part of one another and that God might be a part of them. And they walked with God in the cool of the day, that that relationship, the, the one that Jesus is calling for, that that relationship might be sustained. Matthew 18, 20, Jesus says, where two or three are gathered in my name, I'm in their midst. We were never meant to be alone. We were made for God. We were made for one another. That when Jesus rose from the dead, the first thing he did when he met with his disciples, it said he opened his mouth and he breathed on them, that his spirit might be a part of you and me. He doesn't pray for us only from a distance. It's, he's as close as our very own breath that the power of his spirit might live through us. Not one day, but this day. Hebrews 10, 24, 25 says, let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds, not forsaking our own assembling together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day drawing near. You and I, we were made to be one. One with Christ. And one with one another. And that's the prayer of Jesus. Not only for those, but for these, you and me. It may be this morning that uh, you've tried hard, hard to live by yourself, separated from others. Maybe they haven't reached out to you, so you haven't reached out to them. That's just one more booger bear. It's one more problem, one more threat. But it's, it has no power in the name of Jesus Christ. Or it may be that you're in that, that hard place, that difficult place, that, that this is a time, a time where, where your joy, your joy has been taken away. Maybe you didn't know that Jesus was praying for you and that he's as close as your very own breath. Well, he prayed for your protection. He prayed for your joy. And, well, he prayed also for our unity. So I want to invite you to, to pray now with me. Let's pray. Jesus, you're here. We're two or more gathered in your name. It's a power that we don't have on our own, the power of your spirit. Lord, may that spirit live through us and may we, may, may we be made one the way that you designed us to be made, one with, with you and one with one another. 
It doesn't come natural. Our natural instinct is to pull away from you. Our natural instinct is to pull away from one another. Our natural instinct is to try and to be alone. But you said from the beginning it's not good for the man to be alone. It's not good for any of us to be alone. Lord, with the power of your Holy Spirit, give us strength enough to reach out to you, reach out to one another. Not just to those who look and sound and behave the way that we do. That we aren't in the business of separating sheep from goats and we take our eyes off you. Lord, no, a unity where our eyes are, are on you and the strength we have, Lord, that it's yours. And may, may we know the unity that you pray for us. Lord, it may, may be that, that there are folks that don't know your joy, didn't know that it was possible because their external circumstances, they're in a hard and a difficult place. No one knows hard and difficult the way that you do. Lord, give us not just a little joy, but complete joy, a joy that comes from your Holy Spirit that we might know we're not alone and that you are praying for us this day. Jesus, it also may be that they're there, they're folks today that um, you've turned a warning light on for their protection. Your Holy Spirit is speaking to them right this minute. They hear it, but they aren't listening. They've decided to turn another way and and pretend that you're not speaking. With the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord, give us those eyes that hear, eyes that see and those ears that hear, and know that you're not, we're not alone and you're not way off in heaven. Grant us strength enough to respond. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Hi. Thank you for joining us. My name is Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Our mission here at RUMC is to help people live a Christ-centered life. We're a welcoming church, we're a biblical church, and we're a compassionate church. That the, we believe that the way that, that God made us, that he made us in his image. And what the Bible tells us is that his image is an us, is an our when God said in the creation story, let us create humans in our image, he made us to be in community together. He made us to connect to him and one another. That's the place that this is at Roswell United Methodist Church, a place of community and faith. I want to invite you to join us. It might be online, it might be through social media, or it might be here in person. We meet at 9 o'clock in a contemporary service with a band. We also have two 1115 services. One is here in the sanctuary with a traditional choir and organ. We also meet at 1115 with a band in our chapel. Thank you for joining us, and I look forward to meeting you.